Good morning, one and all. Welcome to my online, online audience. It is Monday, November 2nd, 2020. Welcome to Homecoming 2020. Um, before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Monday. We thank you for life. We thank you as we kick off Homecoming 2020 that will be a rich blessing to each and every one of us. Bless this university, bless all that is watching on this online platform, I pray, amen, amen. This webinar is sponsored by the College of Business and Management. Before I introduce the speaker, I would like to invite my audience on the YouTube platform that if you have questions during the speaker's presentation, please feel free to type those in the chat. Our speaker today will be presenting on Reimagine Yourself, Growth, Agility, and Talent Development in COVID-19. A graduate of the class of 2006, Desiree McFarlane, an experienced human resource practitioner, leadership coach, and public speaker that is passionate about people. She underscore employee engagement, employee development, and supportive leadership as three essentials that every organization must have front and center in their people strategy in order to develop, grow, expand, and remain competitive in that race for top talent. Helping people leader with understanding and applying these concepts has been her life's work. Sharing her over 27 years professional experience and knowledge gained through diligent research and testing of various hypotheses has allowed Desiree to fulfill her life purpose of serving others. She is humbled by every opportunity afforded her to contribute to the growth and development of the human resource and will continue to advocate for the adopted of employee engagement, employee development, and supportive leadership as the best way to ensure employee commitment and leadership accountability. She has a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration from Northern Caribbean University and a Master's of Science degree in Human Resorts from Florida International University. Her motto, if better is possible, good is not enough. My online audience help me to welcome Desreen McFarlane. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. And, and I, I want to say, to say a huge, huge thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, something, something needs to be muted. I'm getting, getting a feedback. feedback. Thank, thank you. you. So, so I, want I want to say a huge, huge thank, thank you to the host for today. Thank you for your kind words of introduction. And I, and I also want to thank the, the Alumni Association of Northern Caribbean University for, for affording me this opportunity to speak to us on this very important topic. Reimagining yourself. Growth, agility, and talent development. And I'm, and going, I'm going to put a little, little spin on, on talent, talent development, development converting, converting it to personal development. At, at this time of COVID-19, where, where many, many persons are thinking, thinking of the past, past I've, I've had, had too many, many conversations, conversations with, with persons, persons longing, longing for what was, was and dreading what's, what's, what's what is ahead. ahead. And, and my, my role today, today is, is to see if together, together we, we can, can think, think clearly, clearly about what, what we, we ought to be doing as, as individuals to prepare ourselves to live now, now and, and for, for the future. future. I am going, going to share, share my screen. screen. I have, I have a few, few slides, slides that, that I want to share with, with you today as, as we unpack, unpack this topic. topic. So, so hopefully, hopefully you, you are seeing my screen. screen. So, so I like, like to do a little, little bit of research, research when I, whenever I do these things, things I, like I like to do some level of research, research 
to see, see what, what is, is, what is what happening, happening out there, there. What, what are other, other people saying. saying. And, and I came across um, an, an article from a New, New York, York Times, Times columnist named, named Thomas, Thomas Friedman. Friedman. And, and this, this was, was done, done in 2020. 2020. And, and I think it, it sets the right tone for what we've been we'll talking about. Reimagining ourselves. ourselves. And, and this, this is what, what Mr. Friedman, Friedman had to say. say. He, he said, said, rather than, than trying to stop, stop the inevitable storm of change, change. And, and I'm, I'm going, going to add, that, that is, is COVID-19. What, what we need, need to do is, is to build an, an eye that, that moves with, with the storm. storm. Draw, Draw energy, energy from, from it and, and create, create a platform, platform of dynamic, dynamic stability within, within it. it. My, My first, first experience, experience of a storm, storn, was, was in, in 1988, that was the year, year of Gilbert. Gilbert. And, and I, I recall when, when the eye of the storm, storm came over, over there, there was, was a lot, lot that, that we could, could do. do. We, we were busy, busy um, trying up spaces, spaces repairing, repairing roofs, um, moving, moving people, people to higher ground, ground, preparing for the, for the other, other end, end of the storm. storm. I, I want, want to propose to you this, you this morning, morning that, that COVID-19 COVID is just, just the beginning, beginning of the storm. storm. And, and now, now what, what we, we need to do is, is to create, as, as Mr. Friedman said, said that, that I build, build that, that I in the storm, storm that, that we, we can, can move with, with the storm. storm. It, there's, there's no, no sense, sense of looking back, back to 2019 or what life was, was before. before. What, what we, we need to do as, as individuals and as, as groups, groups and, and whatever, whatever you represent, whether, whether you're, you're a student, you're a business, business owner, owner, you're an employee, we all need to take steps to create that eye, to move with the storm and draw energy from it. As the changes are happening, it, we should be thinking about what's coming next and prepare for it, as opposed to longing for the past. As I said, I've had too many conversations of people longing for what was. What was is gone. This is now. And so I'm going to ask you some very critical questions and I'm going to give you time, just a few seconds or so to think about each of these questions because I had to ask myself the same questions as I approached this topic. So thanks to Mr. Friedman for just setting the stage for us as to what we need to do in order to create a platform of dynamic stability. And I don't want you to miss that. Dynamic stability means that it is flexible, that it is subject to change and it is subject to, to be multifaceted as well. So there is not a one size fits all. We're not gonna come up with a plan and that's gonna be the plan of a lifetime. We will have to keep creating and recreating as we go along. So my first question, who are you? In order for you to reimagine yourself, you first have to understand and know who you are. So if you should be called about an opportunity today and someone ask you, who are you? What would you say? I want you to think about that for a minute. Who are you? My second question. Now that you have thought about who you are and is warming up to, oh, so I can do this. I am this. I am more than what I think I am. What is your purpose? Why were you created and given life as opposed to another person? Why are you here? The first time I was exposed to this question was in 1996, and it was a really huge change for me where the company that I was working for was closing down. And I thought my career was over. I thought I would work for that company for the rest of my life. So longing for the past, yes, we were told. And now I start thinking, oh my goodness, how do I move forward? And then I was asked that question, what is your purpose? And it is when I was able to answer that question that I could see the way forward. So knowing who you are, and what is your purpose are critical questions that all of us need to answer in this difficult COVID period when our lives have been upended in ways that we never imagine, but we are still alive. 
And because we are still alive, we can reimagine ourselves and put things in place to deal with the challenges that are here and those that are ahead. I hear people talking about, well, they cannot wait for 2020 to begin. But do you know what 2021 is going to be like? Why do you assume that 2021 is going to revert back to 2019 or before? And, and, and that's the question I've asked some persons. And then they're like, oh, oh, I was just waiting for it to finish and see what happened. No, we have to prepare for 2021, not wait for it, prepare for it. So my next question is, you are here online, you are listening to what I'm saying. We're just here out of curiosity. What are you doing in this moment, right now, to fulfill the purpose? The purpose for which you were created. What are you doing right now? If you are thinking that it is something you need to think about, that's good. That's a good place to be, but it cannot stop there. I have more questions, right? So who are you? What is your purpose? What are you doing right now to fulfill that purpose? Did you come online here to learn something, to get a, 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 you know, some ideas as to what to do? I hope so, because I have a few ideas, not many, but I hope that as we go through, you will start seeing where you're going and what your potential is for the future. More questions. What are you doing right now? What is the job you're in? What is the line of study you're in? What is the business you're operating? Are you worrying? So are you studying? Are you at work? Are you running a business? Are you worrying? Have you been furloughed and now you're just worrying? Um, you know, furloughed, sorry and you're now just worrying or you were made redundant or you know that your job is on the line or your business is closing down, are you doing nothing? If what you're doing now does not work out, if the job doesn't work out, if the line of study does not work out, if the business does not work out, if worrying, which we know is not never going to work out and nothing works out, what's next for you? These are critical questions that we need to ask ourselves. What is next? If the job that I'm doing, the line of study that I'm doing, the business that I'm, 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 I'm running, the worrying that I'm doing and the nothing that I'm doing, if it doesn't work out, what is next? To answer this question, you have to think about what you have to offer the world. And it takes, right, takes us right back to purpose. So what I want you to start thinking about is this. What are my competences? What am I good at? What are my skill sets? What are the dormant skills that I have that could pivot me from where I am this moment to where I want to be? What are the partnerships if I'm not working, if I've lost my job and I've been given a lump sum and I'm sitting there looking at it and it is drip, drip, dripping as the months go by because the bills are taking it. What partnerships can I establish with other talented, ambitious and capable people? And I'm gonna spend a little time to talk about this. Your family may be wonderful, but if they do not have the competences to help you to monetize your skills, the dormant skills, the competences that you have, they are not capable. They may be ambitious, but they are not capable. So you have to look for the three. Talented, ambitious, and capable. The ambitious person will not fold at the first challenge because you're going to have challenges. Whatever it is that you decide to offer the world, is going to take something from you. So you need people on your team that is going to be there for the long haul. People who are forward thinking, people who understand that they're teething pains and they're setbacks, but all of those are learnings that you need to go through in order to get where you need to go. 
So as you think about your purpose and who you are and what you really want to do or what you can do or what the possibilities are for you, I also want you to think that no man is an island. You're not going to get through this alone. You need people. Even if it's a business that you can do on your own, you are the talent, you're going to need support. Maybe you're going to need a mentor. Maybe you're going to need a, a coach. Maybe you are going to need a consultant. Maybe you're going to need people who are even brighter than you. It's your idea, but they are able to help you to monetize it. Please ensure that they are talented, ambitious, and capable. Very, very important. If they are talented and not ambitious, they are wrong. They're not the person. If they're capable and not ambitious, they are not the person. If they're just talented and capable, they are not the person. You, you get where I'm going. These three ingredients, talented, ambitious, and cap capability is what you need to move forward. Then you need to decide whether funding is required. Do you have enough funds, right? What are your options? Can my savings along with what I have do it? Do I need loans? Do I, do I need to apply for grants or seed funding in order to, 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 to do this thing? That's what I want you to think about. We cannot give up and we cannot look back. The past is gone. And when people talk about the new normal, I say, stop using the word new, say normal. Say, this is the normal not the new normal, because inevitably what they're thinking about when this new normal is over, I'm going to go back to the normal that I knew before. And I think like Mr. Friedman, I agree with him. What we need to do is to create an eye in the storm and move and pull energy from the storm and move with it. We keep going. So maybe you're fine right now, the course of study is good, the job is good, the business is going well. But here's another question. If what you're doing now does not work out, or sorry, does work out, if it does work out, but down the road you realize it's not your passion, it is not the thing that you wake up every morning wanting to do. It is not the place where you wake up every morning wanting to go because it's not your passion. It's not, it is not the thing that you really feel that you should be doing. The question is, what will you do? Because you see, our comfort zone is somewhere where we are familiar and it feels safe and it feels secure. But many times our comfort zone does not bring us, help us to achieve the potential that we have for success, the impact that we could have on other people's lives. Our comfort zone living is just going with the flow for the most part. We do not challenge ourselves because we're comfortable, okay, the job pays the bills mm -hmm, and it sends the kids to school and it puts away a little, you know, I, I would really like to travel, but you know, I, I, I will not do that because it, it, it's not, you know, it, it's not gonna reach there. But it, when you're pursuing your passion, it's a different thing. So what if what you're doing now does work out, but it's not your passion? First question, what will you do? Second question, Will you continue doing it? There you go, because it's comfortable. Or will you reimagine yourself and pivot to your passion? That's an important question for all of us to answer. You see, for me, when I was in administration, I was doing it and I was enjoying it. But if that redundancy didn't push me out, literally out of my comfort zone, and then I went to work for this company in a, another company in, in a similar capacity, and then someone came to me and said, I think you belong in human resource, and this is why, and he told me why. And that's where I found 
my passion. I am passionate about people. I am passionate about people development. I'm passionate about pushing people beyond the, beyond the limits that they have set for themselves. And I do it for myself as well. When I'm asked to do things like this, it may be scary to me, but if I'm asked to do it, I believe that's because I, there's somebody has seen something in me. And I want you to think about the many times that persons have had a conversation with you. Maybe you baked a cake and you, 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 you saw something and they say, why, why are you wasting your time doing that? Look how good you are at this. And you say, no, no, it pays the bills. You know, it is comfortable. Now, now that comfort level is being shaken by COVID-19. Can you reimagine yourself pursuing that thing that you're so good at? All right. So I have come up with five P's to life's fundamental questions. And these five P's, if you get nothing from this, this course today, I want you to think about these five P's. The first one, of course, is purpose, because we that's where we started. Who are you? What is your purpose? The other one is planning. The, sec the third one is process. The fourth, power. And the final one is passion. And I'm going to ask you five questions that I considered life's fundamental questions. The first one, why are you here? Ask yourself that question. Why am I here in 2020? Why of all the people that could be alive today in this moment, why am I one of those persons? That's one way to look at that question. The second one is, why was I created? For what purpose was I placed on this earth? What are the gifts and talents that are embedded in me that helps me to recognize that purpose? Critical question, why are you here? Second question, what do I need to do to fulfill the reason why I'm here? Why I am here listening this morning, why I am here alive in 2020 to go through this pandemic, because if you're alive, you are going through it. It didn't take you out. So it means that there is a purpose for you. So what do you need to do to fulfill that purpose? For you to reimagine yourself, these are powerful questions that you have to ask yourself. And don't worry if you only need to reimagine yourself not living in the past. Do it. You are going to find that when you accept that this is normal, your plans will be geared towards this normal as opposed to the past, because it makes no sense planning for what was. We need to plan for what's ahead. Process, how will I do what I need to do to fulfill my purpose? You see, many persons have great plans written down but there is no implementation process attached to that plan. So if you know your purpose and you have come up with a plan to fulfill it, unless you have a starting point, a midpoint where the work in the middle there, where the real work happens to get you to fulfillment, there is a problem. There are many wonderful business plans that are sitting in folders and stuff. Cannot implement because there is no implementation process attached to it. So what we all need to do is not just to plan, but then to have a step by step. This is the most, if you think the plan is detailed, 
You're going to have a process and you're going to have what if scenario. If this fails, then what? If this works, then what? If this is slow, then what? If the supplier runs out, if this supplier runs out, then what? That's what process helps you to do. So when you start working the process, because you have run your what if scenarios, when one set of sources and resources run out, you have a plan B. Process helps you with that. Because ladies and gentlemen, who is ultimately responsible for fulfilling our purpose? We are, we have the power. The power is yours. You see, we work for organizations and we give all the power to the organizations. We just see ourselves as an addendum to the organizations. So if the organization closed, as was my case in 1996, then I'm lost. You're lost, we're lost. If the organization sends us home, oh my goodness, who am I outside of that uniform? That's why you need to answer that question, who are you? Are you an addendum to an institution? or to the business that you started, which COVID has challenged and you cannot pivot from that business. You have to think about something new. That's why it is important. You are the one that has the power to bring to life what is dormant within you, that potential to reimagine yourself out of your comfort zone into pursuing something meaningful, something applicable, not just to the now, but to the future. You see, not everybody was caught off guard when COVID-19, I had it, I had never heard of Zoom before. I knew of Skype, I knew of Teams, but right now we're Zooming. I'm addressing you on that platform. Everybody knows about Zoom. Zoom has come to the rescue of many organizations, but those guys were planning for this. If you notice, companies like Microsoft, they did not come up with one operating system and say, okay, I have created it and it's over. No, they knew that they had the power to keep recreating what they started to stay current. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is yours. And I want to leave the last one. I want you to, to really think about because I know that I'm repeating myself, but I'm repeating it for emphasis. I want you really to think. What do I love doing that can contribute to the fulfillment of my purpose? What is it that I can monetize? Because let's, let's face it, okay? We need money, sometimes lots of it to cope. Medical bills, mortgage, car loan, school fees, and we could go about the day-to-day -day living, grocery, water, electricity, etc. right? So that is why I am focused on, if your passion is charity, great. But there is another one, there must be something else that you have that you can monetize. So how do you monetize your passion? So if you're a creative person, right? You, you're good at taking photographs, you're good at baking, baking cake, or you're good at starting a, a, a business and creating um, websites and, and, and all that. You're a creative person. You can help somebody who is struggling to look better than they look now online, right? Then your purpose, is to create. If your purpose is to serve as is mine, then there will always be someone, something, or somewhere that require your service. You have to decide what is my passion that align with service or creativity and pursue it. And that is going to be tied to your purpose and you must have a plan and you must have a process to follow because you have the power. The power is yours. So why growth? So the topic was reimagining yourself. Growth, agility, 
and talent development. And I told you I'm pivoting to personal development. So why growth? The fact is none of us are stagnant. We are all growing. Without knowing, without paying attention to it, we are all growing. But the growth I'm going to talk about goes beyond that. When we are pursuing our passions, ladies and gentlemen, growth is never an issue. Why? Because we will be willing to do whatever it takes to be the best at what we are doing. Somebody said something once and I thought about it. And he said, when you are pursuing your passion, only you can do what you are doing your way. And I thought, really? But it's true. There may be somebody who can do it better than you, but there will be people who desire it your way, the way you do it. So it is absolutely important that whatever your passion is, if you are only able to bake the cake now, you think about learning to ice the cake, to decorate the cake. And not just to decorate it um, normally, but to, 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 to check out what they're doing on Food Network and to see where decorating is going, to grow in what you're doing, to learn to make other cakes. And I find that if that is your passion, like for me, I love to present, I love to, to share. And so I have to do a lot of research and it doesn't matter. And I grow and I learn. When I was doing this research, I recognized that I had work to do in answering these questions, these fundamental questions. So growth is essential if you are going to be able not just to face the day, but the days ahead. And I find that when it's, you're passionate about something, the research, the work you're willing to do. The second one is agility. And this is the buzzword for 2020. And a lot of people sometimes ask, what was it is really everybody talking about this agility? So let me see if I can break it down for you. So because the external environment is always one step ahead. Just consider COVID-19. It was ahead of us. But so was Zoom. So it's not just COVID-19 that was ahead. Technology was also ahead. We had spoken over and over again about how the rising technology and the swift way in which technology, yeah, was, was taking over the world. And now we see churches, schools, businesses, everybody's now catching on, catching up. So when we talk about COVID, we, we, we sometimes pretend that if it's the only thing that is happening in the world. No, it's not. There's a lot that is happening in the world. Maybe I would not get the time off to go to NCU to do this presentation or whatever presentation I would have been, been asked to do. But now I'm able to reach people all over the world through Zoom. So Zoom was ahead of the game. Right? So agility means that we continuously build our capacity to take on the challenges. We're forward looking, not backward looking, right? So the external environment is continuously throwing up changes and challenges and we must be willing to meet those. We must be willing to meet those without sitting for too long. There's nothing wrong in sitting and think, how do I move forward? But that should be when the planning begins because purpose is pushing us to do something. So agility really is changing or adapting to the environment as it changes. And when it demands a change again, we change again. And as it changes, we change again. We are prepared. We are not shocked by changes, changes is what we do because we know that we are not in charge of the external environment. This is what we normally call that's what the threat. We, we cannot control the threat. We can mitigate the threats by being prepared, but controlling it, no, we cannot. We cannot control it. So what we need to do is to prepare to mitigate the threats of the external environment. And do not forget that 
inherent in those threats are also opportunities for growth. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. If we stop to think about the opportunities that are thrown up by COVID-19, it is amazing. I will share this. My church had a week of prayer in the morning from 5 to 6 a.m. And we had over 100 people. If we did that, because it was online, if we did that before COVID, maybe 20 would be there in the morning. So there are opportunities. There are, there are challenges, but there are also opportunities. Let's now go to personal development. And personal development is so important. Personal, me, accepting that I have not actualized. Now, pardon me, but I, I really do not buy into the concept of self-actualization. I believe that's when I'm dead, I'm actualized. I have nothing more to do. There was, I think it was Abraham in the Bible died when he was full. So he was the only person that I know that has actualized. And it was at his death that that statement was made. He died when he was full, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we need to, em to, to embrace learning. Because one of the reasons why we cannot deal with change the way we ought to deal with it, it's because our brains are not being exercised to think critically. The mindset change is what is required. Personal development brings new information into the brain to help it to adapt to the new norms, to what is happening now. So that mindset change, so it says because we are not we cannot really grow or adapt agile. We can't keep changing if we don't have the skills and competencies to change. So it's important therefore for our development that we spend time, maybe it's a course that we need to do, maybe it's research that we need to do, maybe it's to get a coach, maybe it's to get a mentor, somebody to spend time with us in helping us to unpack how we are going to go about reimagining ourselves out of the rut of the past, because that's gone. And money, yes, we spoke about investment in, in earlier in a business and so on, but first we need to invest in ourselves. Who are you? And when we say, okay, I am this and I only can do this, that and that. So even if you're gonna get a financial controller, you need to know a little bit about finance to see how that person, to be able to understand the papers, the statements, so that if the person is not being fair, I, want, I don't know what word to use. I don't want to say honest, but I'm, I, yes, I've said it, you know. So personal development, and it says to keep current with whatever is trending in your field. So if you're studying, if you're a student and you're studying, it's important for you to keep looking at what is happening in your field and push yourself in that direction. The static thing of I know this, so you have some persons, they went and got a first degree and a master's degree and that's it, I am now learned. And it's worse if they have a PhD, there's nothing more to learn. Those are some of the same people right now that cannot move forward. They are stuck. So personal development is a lot more than just growing. It is learning, learning, getting new information into our computer, our brains, not being afraid of technology, right? Some persons can't send email, they can't use a smartphone, but technology is the way now. So see what is happening? People are being left behind, but there's good news. You can reimagine yourself. You can look at yourself, who am I, and identify your developmental needs and take steps to correct those and ensure that you keep current with what is going on, especially if it is in the field of something that you are passionate about. So I want to share this. This is, this is interesting. I want you to reimagine yourself today for the first time in my lifetime, I feel that the world is level. Everybody is dealing with the same challenges. Everywhere, lockdown, COVID, 
um, vaccine, children at home, work from home, exposure because you have to go healthcare workers. Not, are you seeing it? We are global citizens, but think about this. Everyone therefore is now international. So wherever you're listening to me from, you are competing with talent from all over the world in terms of, so if, you, if you're not a business owner or you want to you know, change, but you're, you're an employee who wants to work for a firm and you've lost your job in this firm, there are other opportunities available now, but you just have to search for them and know where they are because the world is now kind of level. Everybody's a global citizen. Every talent is a global citizen. Opportunity that we thought we leave Jamaica. So now I'm talking to the Jamaica to pursue. Because we've got to go to Canada. We've got to go to the United States. We've got to go to China. We, 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 we've got to go to, to, to Britain. All of a sudden, they're happening virtually. Absolutely. I, I, I was invited um, to share on, 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 on a similar webinar with the OECS. It was happening in St. Lucia, but I was right from my office here. That's where I spoke from. Look at that. So we are now global citizens and we need to reimagine ourselves as global citizens as opposed to um, having that myopic thing that I am in Jamaica and the only opportunities that I have is right here in this little space. No, and if I can't go somewhere, I cannot achieve. No, reimagine, it has happened. The world has opened up, but we need to search. The opportunity to earn in US dollars for the Jamaicans, again, I'm talking to, right? Or if you're, you're in some of the Caribbean countries um, that you don't earn US dollars, it's not just a figment, no, it's a reality. But again, again, you have to find your purpose and then go searching for these opportunities. I want to share this one. Access to global job, the global job market is now opening and exploring. I, I want to just give a, a plug to the LinkedIn app. If I go to my LinkedIn right now and I look at jobs, there's a whole list of jobs being offered for me to apply for. Get on, get on, put your, your profile there, put your business there. And there are others that for, for the business owners as well, you know, for you to get, get someone to help you to have a presence on, 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 on Instagram. If you have pivoted to doing deliveries and, and, and you have pivoted to doing something new, making masks and you just didn't start making one type of mask, you are now making masks that, covers this and shows the face for those people who want everything. You can promote your business online. You can. But you have to reimagine yourself, not as the person in the past, but the person who is taking charge of the opportunities of the present. And it's also looking towards the future, realizing that this is actually really technological age Technology is driving everything. And so whatever it is that you're doing, you've got to get with it. You've got to get with the technology. So reimagine yourself understanding how technology works. Reimagine yourself using technology to pursue your passion. Reimagine yourself putting yourself out there. I, I did a course some time ago about self-promotion. If you don't do, if you don't let people know what you can do, how are they going to know? So remember, the process should include some kind of marketing, getting people to know what you're capable of, what you offer, what you're doing, and also convincing them that they need what you are offering. It's, it's absolutely necessary that you reimagine yourself as a global citizen. So what is the world looking for? Let me tell you. People who can navigate the rapid changes in the external environment as quickly as the en environment demands it. Agility. It's going to be the buzzword for a long time because the changes are now rapid and the world is looking for people who are able to adapt rapidly to those change. The world is looking for engagement. People who are passionate about service. 
people who are able to commit to something bigger than themselves, a team. I told you before, no man is an island. We need people. We need a team around us. As I said, even if your, your talent is a public speaking one. Yesterday, I made this presentation to my family before I'm making to you today. I, you need people to give you feedback, right? You need people to, to learn from and they learn from you. And what you have is an exchange of ideas that's bigger than yourself, right? And you need, the world is looking for people who are willing to go the extra mile. When, when, when someone challenges, if you can do this, you can do that. You don't say, no, no, my company only do this. No, you go research to see, my goodness. Could this be something that I could diversify my business and yet it is connected? Because the customer is telling you that. That's what the world is looking for. And again, the world is looking for people who understand the role of technology. No, technology is an enabler of connectivity. That's how we're connected now. It's an enabler of productivity. It is information security. So you hear things going to the cloud. Don't worry about it. You buy the correct licenses, your information is protected. And then there's e-commerce. I have given this, this, um, this example in other webinars that I've done, but I think it is worth repeating. During COVID-19, I needed a door and I went on h &L True Value and I was able to order the door and the door was delivered here. I was all able to order and pay. That's what I'm talking about. Pivoting, reimagining your business, reimagining yourself, reimagining your talent being used to respond to the now and the future instead of looking back. The past is gone. It is gone. Mr. Friedman said, do not try to control the storm. Create that eye that you can move within the storm and you pull the energy from it. And as it changes, you are agile and you're able to adapt to the changes and be relevant. That's what people are struggling to do these days, to be relevant and to, to reimagine yourself is really to ensure that your relevance continues. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, reimagining yourself is possible. Yes, it is. It is possible. What is required? It begins with knowing who you are. It continues with understanding your purpose. And then applying a process because ultimately, you and I have the power to pursue whatever it is we are passionate about. Thank you. So much, Desreen McFarlane. Thank you so much. Let me just share some of the comment that is here in the chat. Sandra Baldwin says, excellent presentation. Anne-Marie Brown Mitchell said, great information. Thank you. I need this. Um, Tracy Campbell said, indeed, 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 I love it. Shelly Gray said, love this. Now, those are some of what our viewership, you're not hearing? So again, we, we have a question, and I think the question is from Stafford Cargill. And he said, what if my purpose or my goal re requires resources that I cannot access. What should I do? these things. So yes, I am getting a feedback. Right. So yes, it's, it is challenging. Yes, at first, it may seem as if there is no way you can do it. But I encourage you to do one, do some research. Second, speak to someone 
who has done something similar to find out what it is that they do. Remember I say we need to engage individuals or sometimes a team of persons to help us to monetize our passion. Many times it is not something that we can do on our own. So I encourage you, do the research, get yourself a mentor, get yourself a coach, get, get a consultant, speak to people who have been there and that have done that. And you will be surprised to know that what you thought was impossible becomes possible. Good. And I think you answer another question that Stafford Cargill also had. Here's another question again from Stafford Cargill. Is patient a useful ingredient to the five fundamental question? I may become discouraged in fulfilling my purpose. I must go to NCU and get a degree. So is it that I have to go to a university to get a degree to fulfill my purpose? Sean, one of the things that I never ever do, I do not give prescriptions to people say, follow this, that, and that. Now, if you notice, what I give you were certain guidelines. Find your purpose, devise a plan around that. In addition to the plan, have a process that you will follow. And remember, I did say the process is dynamic. I spent a lot of time on process than any other of the areas because it is not a one thing. Sometimes the process involves going back and replanning, evaluating and coming back and, and, and looking now. For some persons, it may be that you need to pursue a course of study. But in not all cases, I don't have to tell you about the Bill Gates and all the other guys who never had a degree before they brought their passion to life. But in a lot of cases, that is something that is required. And again, um, some persons say, I, I, I can't afford it, but how do you know? Have you thought about all the scholarships that, have you gone to res research all the scholarships that are available? So what we normally do is to look this way, we look at what we know and we, we get boxed in, right? But when we start expanding our network and talking to other people, we recognize that there are other opportunities out there. So no, you don't have to go to a university to get a degree to pursue your passion, but there are times when that is important. As I said, um, if you have someone taking care of your money, even if it's your wife or your husband, it's good to know how money works. It's good to know how to read a financial statement. You know, if you're, 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 you have a business, for example, so that you can know when something is bleeding, you know, there's drip, 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 drip. And then all of a sudden it becomes that $10 million is missing because you did not know how to identify that. So education is important, but skills and competences are also excellent ways of fulfilling your purpose. Okay, Ms. Desiree McFarlane, I wish to extend gratitude to you. And let me just use some of what our audience on the YouTube have said, and this help us to express our gratitude. Anne Thompson Davis says, very useful information. Ava Marie Clark said, excellent presentation. Quite acceptable for this new normal. Another one said, such a powerful and, and impactful presentation. Thank you so much to Ms. Desiree McFarlane. Thank you so much. And may I invite my audience to join us at 12.30 for another impactful presentation. Thank you so much. Let me remind you that this webinar is sponsored by the College of Business and Management. Thank you so much. See you at 12.30.